It's Platt, and today we check out a blonde. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is Blonde. It comes to us from the folks at BJ's Brewhouse. Uh, interesting enough, they call the beer Blonde, kind of implying a blonde ale, but technically it's supposedly a Kolsch, which is a German-style lager. Uh, we will have to get inside this beer <laughs> to find out uh, what it is. Uh, a little background on to BJ's. Uh, the parent company is BJ Re BJ's Restaurant Company, or, or BJ's Restaurants Incorporated. They are based in Huntington, California, and they are a publicly traded company. Uh, this includes BJ's Grills, BJ's Brew Houses, BJ's Pizza and Grills, all the different variations that they have. The original one opened in 1978 in Santa Ana, California. It was known as BJ Chicago Pizzeria. It was owned by a couple of gentlemen, uh, Jim Cozen and Leonard Allenstein. Hopefully I said those names correctly. Um, the original name of the place was supposed to be BJ Grunts. Uh, apparently, though, there was a burger place in Chicago that had the name. So a little lawsuit ensued, and uh, by the time the opening came, they had switched the name to BJ's uh Chicago Pizzeria um, kind of uh, settled that out. About a little over a decade in, the uh, the first owners or the the you know, original set of owners sold out to a couple of gentlemen, uh, Paul Montanello and Jerry Hennessy. Apparently, they were the accountants for the old company. Uh, I guess they saw something the others didn't and decided uh, they needed to uh, take control, which they did. Uh, five years later, in 1996, they had seven uh, locations open at the time. They decided that was enough, that uh, it was time to go public, uh, which they did. They started selling stock uh, to the company. They raised roughly $9 million. And so with that $9 million, they uh, kind of started their first major expansion efforts. Uh, first, they bought 26 Pietro Pizzas locations. I think they shut a couple of them down, but most of them they converted to BJ's Pizzas. Also that year, in 1996, they opened their first microbrewery. Uh, so they kind of brought the brew into BJ's brew house by then. Uh, jump forward about uh, 15 years or so later, they, uh, they named in 2012 current CEO Greg Trojan. Uh, they put him in that position, and he has been CEO ever since. Today, they have 215 restaurants in 29 states. They are probably the largest, or if not one of the largest, kind of brew pub style chains that are out there. Uh, just a little uh, knowledge for you. Most of the locations don't brew their own beer. Uh, you'll see like a big green silo out front. You may see behind the bar, or, you know, you'll see a big glass window and you'll see giant stainless steel tanks, but those aren't fermenters. There's no brewing going on. Those are what are called bright tanks. They're just used to serve uh, the beer. Real quick, let's get to some of their beers. Uh, they got a decent variety of beer. They kind of cover all the basics, so they're, they're not really pushing the envelope. Don't get this confused with, you know, what they do at Dogfish Head or Firestone Walker or the brewery. You know, they're not pushing the envelope. They're kind of covering their bases. Uh, first, we have Jeremiah Red. Uh, it is an Irish red. Actually, it's a strong Irish red because it comes in at 7.3% ABV. I was mildly surprised to see that because most of these brew pub style chains, they play the hits and they generally play, play them at 5% ABV. They really don't push much over that. But it was nice to see that they had uh, a couple of different offerings that were a little bit stronger ABV wise, including the next one, Tatanka. Comes in at 8.5% ABV. This is an imperial stout. If the word Tatanka sounds familiar, and if you're old enough, you might remember the movie Dances with Wolves, you know, Kevin Costner, Tatanka, Tatanka. It was, that supposedly translates into buffalo or bison or whatever, but Tatanka. Uh, next is Piranha, 5.7% ABV. This is a pale ale, uh, very stylistically true to just kind of a straightforward pale ale. This is dry hopped with Cascade. Uh, but again, the brewer, the beers they do here, nothing out of line. Uh, actually great, probably introductory. If you're trying to get a friend into craft beer, BJ's might not be a bad way to introduce them to some of these styles because they don't really push the envelope much. 
Uh, and lastly is Harvest Heavy, 4.9% ABV. This beer received silver at the 2014 North American Beer Awards. Again, another stylistically consistent beer. Uh, BJ's actually only has seven breweries in five different states. Uh, I believe this on this can, it claims to be produced in Temple, Texas, which is uh, central Texas. And so those breweries are the ones that provide beer for all the others. But don't let those tanks or the grain silo <laughs> run, fool you. They're not brewing any beer there. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. All right, gang, so before we figure out what we got in this can, I wanted to discuss, you know, we're, we're talking about BJ's Brew House, kind of a generic chain of brew pubs. Uh, maybe a good way to describe it is TGI Fridays meets a microbrewery kind of vibe to it. Uh, but uh, in researching this, I found an article, USA Today listed their top 10 brew pubs in America for 2022. I thought I'd go over the top five. If you've been to any of these or if you know some that you think should be on that list, please leave me a comment below. Uh, number five is Salt Spring Brewing in Saline or Saline, Michigan. I'm going to say Saline probably. Uh, number five. Number four is Stronghouse uh, brew, brew Pub in Telluride, Colorado. Uh, that kind of, uh, you know, beauty out west. If they have a patio where I can drink beer and look at the mountains, uh, I can see why I'd definitely be in the top five. Next is City Built Brewing in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, Michigan's become kind of a hot spot for the craft beer movement, so I'm not surprised they have two in the top five. Number two, From the Earth Brewing, Roswell, Georgia. Uh, I've kind of opined on this channel before about the South. It's kind of late to the party as far as the craft beer movement. Good to see, though, a Southern brewery in there. And finally, number one, according to USA Today, is Forbidden Root Brewery in Old Chicago. Uh, they love their beer up there. And uh, if anybody's been to it, like I said, please leave a comment below. So enough about that. Let's see if we have a blonde or a Kolsch here. Slight bit of haze there, um, interesting enough. See, on the nose, I'm getting more malt. There's, you know, Kolsch has a little bit of a hop crispness to it. I'm not getting that on the nose. It seems more of a kind of a straightforward kind of malty beer. Let's give her a try. Yeah, I'm going to say this drinks more as a Blondale um, than a Kolsch. A little more, you know, Kolsch, like I said, has a little bit of crispness to it, a little lighter body. Uh, again, you could get a little bit of a hot bite on it. I'm not getting any of that here. This this tastes more like a blonde ale. So I, I find that interesting that they, and I guess the word in Kolsch style beer, it's probably an ale. It just does not seem uh, lagerish. Um that's interesting. I would love to either hear what the brewing department or the marketing department, how they kind of came ab about with this. Because, again, the name just says blonde would imply this. Um, where are you going with the Kolsch? Uh, thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to review. Maybe they don't do a lot of lager beers, and so this is kind of their attempt at some th something lagerish but a nice very nice drinkable beer again i i think this is a type of beer if you're trying to get your friends away from the bud miller Coors products do something different this definitely will not offend their palate this is something they you know your regular guy uh regular guy beer drinkers would definitely drink this so um as far as using it as kind of a gateway to uh other craft beers works but i'm not sure where they're getting the kolsch <laughs> thing from oh. well 
all that being said, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bombs up.